Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to Robert Sports Show. I'm your host, Robert. All right, amidst all the pro wrestling this weekend, we got to shift gears a little bit. We got to get the NASCAR. We haven't done any NASCAR videos all week, so we got three NASCAR races tonight at Martinsville. The old paperclip, we have the NASCAR Fast and Truck Series. Tomorrow, we have the NASCAR Xfinity Series, and of course, the Cup Series on Sunday. So, we're going to go ahead and do the power ranking, the weekly power rankings that I've been doing the last few weeks. Um, kind of took the lead from Pistol Pete on the morning drive on TMD. Um, he does his power rankings. I do mine a little different. You know what? That's what makes pro, what makes NASCAR NASCAR is everyone can have an opinion. It's 90% opinion, 10% fact. I've actually tweeted the boys on TMD, and uh, Pistol Pete actually read that on the air one of the one of the shows last week towards the end of the show. So that was pretty cool. So my opinion is the number one driver is we'll get there. That's the last of it. But we're gonna go with the, I because what I'm doing is I'm ranking the 16 the 36 full-time teams so for example we know chase elliott's in the nine he's scheduled to run it all year we know chris busher's in the 17 scheduled to run it all year but like the 15 for rick ware the 16 for college Grayson, they're gonna have multiple different drivers so i'm gonna have that car ranked versus maybe like kaz Brawlick, because when he steps away for cody ware or on the 16 car when josh williams in it aj almaninger's in it shane mcgisberg and ty dillon so right now, the bottom five, and these are the 36 is all I'm going to rate. <coughs> Zane Smith is number 36. We know that team is young. We know that team is struggling. But you look at his teammates, the Carson Hosefar and the Corey LaJoy, they are actually in the top 25 in points. So we don't know where the disconnect is. I know this 71 car is Alliance with Trackhouse Racing. The employees are Trackhouse employees building a car in the spire shop so is it the car is it the team is it zane we don't know but you know what he is a rookie in my mind he will get a pass because he definitely needs experience and he doesn't really have a lot until now number 35 harrison burton the 21 Wood brothers that is a penske car that is built in the penske shop Is it the driver or is it the team? I, I, don't, I don't know where the disconnect here is. I know Harrison struggled for his Diamond Cup. Every once in a while, have a great run. Did he come to Cup too early? Is this car that much different than the Xfinity car? I mean, he is a good driver, don't get me wrong. He, but he's not an elite driver like some of his teammates are. But also look at Austin Cendrick. They came to Cup about the same time. Yes, Cendrick won the 500. What is he going to sense? I know he's doing better than Harrison, but... So I would not be shocked if we see a change next year or the year after. Um, I hate it for Harrison Burton. I think he needs a top-tier Xfinity drive. Maybe go back to Joe Gibbs. Maybe find something, you know, something where he can get some confidence back and get himself back. Maybe he does a John Hunter. Go back to the truck series. Work your way back up. John Hunter did it, and it's worked out amazing for him. Uh, number 34 is the collect number 16. AJ Allmendinger, SVG, David... Uh, Derek Krause, Josh Williams, Ty Dillon, combination drivers. Um, they are ranked 34th in the overall power rankings. Not great. Bottom three, not great. I tweeted this out today. With the announcement of, of RCR bringing the 33 back for four races with Austin Hill in 2024 with United Reynolds as a sponsor, I came up with an idea. Now, I did this at last year. And, hey, you can only be right once, right? But you know what? I will throw them out there until, you know, see if I'm right. July 5th last year, we're talking four days after Shane Van Gisbergen won the Chicago Street Race. I tweeted out, you can go to my Twitter page, at Rob Sports Show, and it is pinned. Colic Racing, put SVG in the 10 Colic Xfinity car, let me run the 13 in the uh, Cup races. That literally is what happens. What it, basically what happened. He drove Colic. 97, they renumbered to 10 to 97, whatever. But he ran a few cup races in the 16. So I literally, three or four days after Shane Van Gisbergen won the Scottish Street Race, I literally nailed what was going to happen in 20, 2024. I thought that was the uh, freaking most awesome thing in the world. Um, so my idea, 2025, colleague number 16, SVG, Alliance from Trackhouse Racing, Colleague number 31 cup, Austin Dillon, or sorry, Austin Hill, Austin Hill, 
with a Lance the RCR. So basically the 31 would be like a third RCR car. The 16 would be like a third track house car. Both with Collie Charters. Both with Collie Racing. Remember, Collie Racing is on the RCR campus in Welcome, North Carolina. And if I remember correctly, track house started in the RCR shop with the number 99 before they bought Chip Canassi Racing. So there is precedent for those teams to work together. And then call it, it can have four Xfinity cars with AJ Allmendinger, Daniel Hemrick, um, Josh Williams, and Daniel Dye. Great idea. And then number 32 on the list is Austin Dillon. Maybe you put Austin Dillon in the, in the uh, call it car, put um, Austin Hill in the RCR car. I don't know. Something like that. That way that one of those call it cars is kind of a third RCR car. The other one is kind of a third track house car. That way Matt Collett keeps charters, yet those teams don't have to spend $40 million for a charter. They can use the Collett car that helps Collett Racing, and in turn, it'll help develop Shane Van Giesbergen and Austin Hill. All right, number 10 on the power rank needs Chris Buescher. One top five, five top tens. Average finish, 12.8. Average running position, 16.4. Number nine, I know a lot of people are going to think this is super low, but I don't think it is. William Byron, two wins, two top fives. Enough said right there. Four top tens. Average finish, 12.7. Average running position, 15.5. He has run literally almost mid-pack, but he's got two wins. Daytona had an average running position of 17 and won the race. Number eight, Christopher Bell. One win, three top fives, five top tens. Average finish, 12.7. Average running position, 14.5. Number seven, Ryan Blaney. Three top fives, three top tens, average finish 12.4, average running position 13.0. Number six, Chase Elliott, one top five, two top tens, average finish 12.7, average running position 12.6. So he's literally finishing where he's running for the whole day. Number five, Ross Chastain, one top five, four top tens, average finish 10.5, average running position 14.1. Kyle Larson, number four on the list, one win, three top fives, three top tens. Average finish, 11.86. Average running position, 10.2. Denny Hamlin, two wins, two top fives. See, to me, as we do these power rankings, the top five matter. But when you have two wins, it's awesome, but those are the two top fives. Um, yes, he admitted he jumped the restart a little bit. NASCAR admitted they missed it. But guess what? Also, Denny Hamlin mentioned last week. He was looking in the mirror, looking out the window. He saw the 22 get a run on it. He laid back and get a run. He saw the 5 lay back and get a run. He saw the 19 lay back. So when that 22 took off, he took off. We can argue that line all we want. We can argue that restart all we want. But here's the thing. If people want NASCAR to follow the rules, quote, to the letter of the law, so if your nose isn't on that line and you and you go, okay, first off, we have SMT data. We can figure that out. What? How do you figure it out? Though? Okay, so he has to have less than 20% throttle before he hits the line or less than 50% throttle. But if it's at 49, he's good. If it's at 51, he's fucked. Where do we draw the line? Okay, you know what? We, we figure that line out. If your nose touches that line and you've already hit the throttle, you go to the back, ever how you want to penalize it. Okay, cool. We can do that. Don't wish for something, people. You don't want it. Mm -mm. So when Chase Elliott, when Joey Logano, when Kyle Busch, when insert popular driver name here, Ryan Blaney, jumps to start by a foot, they're at 51% throttle versus 49% throttle, and you ding them, they get a win taken away because it's on the last restart. They don't make playoffs. Everyone crying about NASCAR not following their own rules and be like, but NASCAR affected them making the playoffs. That's not fair. Excuse me? So when Chase Elliott finishes 17th in points again with no win because NASCAR enforced the rule, took the win away, and everyone's crying, well, they need to add in the playoffs like they did with Jeff Gordon that one year. No, it didn't work that way. You can't have it both ways. I personally thought that restart was fine. And I've said that. But that's just my opinion. Anyway, average finish 11.0 for Denny Hamlin. Average running position 9.21. Number two on the list, Ty Gibbs. Three top fives, five top tens. Average finish 9.0. Average running position 11.01. Last week, he was number one on the power rankings. But he got dropped down by the one, the only, Martin Truex Jr. 
two top fives, five top tens, average finish 8.1, average run position 9.19. Not that big a true Rex fan, and, and I've said it before, I mean, I when I rank drivers, personally, I'm like, okay, I am a fan, I am neutral, and I hate. There's only three people that I hate in Cup and Xfinity. There's probably 10 to 12 that I like, that I follow, that I want to see how they're doing. And then everyone else is in the neutral zone. Martin Truex Jr. is in the neutral zone for me. Hmm, cool, he does well, awesome. He uh, got a little upset at the end of Richmond. I thought that was cool, actually. I thought the fact that Denny ran him up, left him a lane. Obviously, it was in preferred lane. He got all pissed off at Denny for that. He got all pissed off at Kyle Larson the way Kyle Larson raced him. I like seeing motion like that from Martin Truex Sr. So, but he is number one in the weekly power rankings. So that is Busher, Byron, Bell, Blaney, Elliott, Chastain, Larson, Hamlin, Gibbs, and number one, Martin Truex Jr. Make sure you check out the previews of the Xfinity Truck and Cup Race, along with all the pro wrestling from WrestleMania Weekend. As always, thanks for watching Robert Sports Show. And don't just have a great day. Have a spiffy day at Robert Sports Show, your YouTube leader in sports content.